Hello, everyone. Hi, Deb. Hello. Hi, Deb. Hello. Hi, Deb. Hello, President Deb. We do have an announcement first thing. Oops. There. Yes, we can it on all that. Uh, not before the announcement. So the announcement it is with broken hearts, we announce the unexpected passing of Jim Stevenson at the Royal Victoria Regional Center on Thursday, July 9th. Uh, Jim Stevenson at the age of 59, uh, loving husband of Janice. Jim will be fondly remembered uh, by many, many friends and dedicated office staff of Stevenson Insurance Broker. Jim had a passion for golf and was a longtime member of the Barry Golf Club. There is notice there of uh, the details, um, as well as, let's try and make that a little bigger here for me. Uh, Jim was the son of past president, uh, 5960 John B. Stevenson, and Jim's brother Gord was also a member of the club. Uh, John B. started the auction in 1952 and had perfect attendance for over 50 years. So he'll be sorely missed and uh, certainly the details are attached there. So with that, good afternoon fellow Rotarians. Welcome to the weekly meeting of the Rotary Club of Barrie. A special welcome to our visiting Rotarians and special guests. Things go better when you are here. We will now begin the meeting in our usual way with O Canada and a toast to the Queen. editor this week is Jeff Hand and he is uh, hoping that if there was any announcements or things to please email him it makes it a little easier for him doing the beacon. Um, many thanks to Brandon Elliott for a great beacon last week. Now we have special presentations and announcements. We do have an announcement. Ian Pavlik. Hello President Debbie can you hear me? I can hear you. How are Great. you, President Ian? <laughs> Great, thanks. So I wanted to make an announcement on behalf of the, again, on behalf of the Rotary Club of Barry Charitable Foundation. Uh, there have been a number of people making donations, which is really appreciated. Um, but in recent memory of all of the unfortunate passings of Rotarians and their family members, so obviously with Ernie, with Ryan Still, and Helen Biles, and now Jim Stevenson, but we've also received a number of people asking questions about how to donate. And so I just wanted to, to clear that up that we do have on the Rotary Club of Barrie Charitable Foundation website, the option to donate online and get a tax receipt immediately. So if you go to RCB, <laughs> rcbcf.com and go to donate page, it will, it's easy to donate there. I, I, I feel a little bit uncomfortable sort of reminding everybody about it. I'm not asking for donations, but more there's just been requests for it. And so I wanted to, to clear that up with a number of people. I think I sent Jeff a very quick one minute video on how to do it. So maybe Jeff, you could quickly run it. To make a donation to the Rotary Club of Barrie Charitable Foundation, visit our foundation website by going to rcb 
CF.com, or stands for Rotary Club of Barry Charitable Foundation. From our homepage along the top, you can click on Donate, and that will take you to our donation page where we have a form where you can make a donation online. You can choose to donate now one time or a monthly recurring amount, and you can enter the amount here. Then leave a message for the foundation if you wish. Then fill out your information, your email address, mailing address, contact information, so that a charitable tax receipt can be sent to you immediately by email. And as you scroll down, you can choose to make the donation by credit card, enter the credit card name, the card number and information, and then you can choose to have no dedication or make this donation in memory of an individual where you can enter their name and then click complete donation now. When you do that, it will make the donation and submit it to the Rotary Club of Barrie Charitable Foundation immediately and you will immediately get an email with your tax receipt. Thank you, Ian. Do we have any other announcements? We can hear you. Okay. Um, that's good. So is there any other announcements? <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, we do have an introduction of guests and visiting Rotarians. I know of one uh, special guest. Lauren, would you like to introduce your special guest? <laughs> um, got LJ here, Hello. learning the ways of Rotary from an early age. I'm Jaden, by the way, <laughs> to introduce Nicole. Papa and Andy are very proud. Do we have any other special guests or visiting Rotarians? Hi, President Depp. I've got uh, Nicole Galbraith as my guest today at her house. <laughs> <laughs> I see a whole crew out there. Who all, who all do you have out there, Brian? Well, Kyle, introduce your guest. I'm I'm home hosting at Brian's house, so I've got Chris Neeker, Greg McWatt, Aaron Hessen, our new Rotarian. He's really trying on my patience, uh, President Deb. He's cost me twelve bucks already. I've got Brian. Uh, Larry Pomfret and uh, incoming President Jody Fatfield Ness to work on the fines for next year. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. It's great to see everybody there, and I love the music before the meeting. <laughs> President Deb, I have my wife Lisa is my special guest, and these two guys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Love and the we, show. And love we have our dogs. Yeah, although they don't look too interested in our meeting. <laughs> no, they're more interested in what's happening outside, but they're here. Oh. President Deb, I have a guest today. Her name is Tanya Sari. Wonderful. Welcome, Tanya. Thank Hi, you. President Deb. It's uh, Steve Meadley from the Rotary Club of Bracebridge. Wonderful. Love having you here, Steve. Any others? Wonderful. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, certainly enjoy that uh, you come and visit us and please come back anytime. Let me get here. We have birthdays and anniversaries. So for birthdays, we have John Werenich, Mark Adams, Jonathan Derrick, and Doug Jernigan. Anniversaries, we have Ted Barnaby and Brenda Johnston, uh, July 24th, 38 years. Craig and Heather Graham, July 26, 34 years. Jeff and Stephen McQuaig, July 28, 19 years. And we have one club anniversary with Daryl Smith, eight years, July 26, 2012. Please accept the congratulations of the club. And in honor of your birthday, uh, five polio plus vaccinations have been made in your name and in honor of the anniversary. I saw that Dave, I don't have many little, little pictures up, but I have you and I love that. Um, 
And for your anniversary, a contribution towards the fight against the COVID-19 with a donation to the Rotary Polio Resource Center. So enjoy your days and uh, make sure you have a nice uh, cold beverage. So with that, I'd like to introduce our past SAA, Steve. And uh, I will turn it over to him. Thank you, uh, President Deb. Uh, welcome to everybody. And uh, it's great to be back and be able to talk to you as acting SAA. And so we're gonna go right into a good news announcement. And this is a great news announcement. And I'm gonna turn this over, Jeff, if you could uh, unmute Dave Tish. Dave? Yes, hi, uh, SAA Steve, President Deb. Um, I have the great pleasure as the uh, chairman of the uh, Rotary Foundation Committee uh, to inform the club of a major policy initiative by our government. The uh, Minister of International Development of Canada, the Honourable Karina Gould, has committed 47.5 million Canadian I'm dollars. Resume, you gone by air card, the last one, I guess, eh? Sorry? Can, can everybody hear me? Yes, I think we can. Oh, okay. Uh, Karina Gold has committed 47.5 million Canadian dollars annually over four years to support the Global Polio Eradication Initiative's endgame strategy, as well as renewed funding for Gavi, uh, the Vaccine Alliance. I might add that the latter funding is uh, well ahead of the usual timing for this. Uh, this is very tremendous news with respect to polio eradication as it should go a long way to getting rid of the 0.1% of cases that remain to be eradicated. It's also great news um, at this point in time because our economy has not really returned back to normal and we're still in the midst of a pandemic. To quote the minister, um, as a global community, we must work to ensure that these most vulnerable, including women and children, have access to vaccinations to keep them healthy wherever they live. COVID-19 has demonstrated that viruses know no borders. Our health here in Canada depends on the health of everyone, everywhere. Together, we must build a more resilient planet. The GPEI, or Global Polio Eradication Initiative, has the networks in place for carrying out widespread vaccinations. And it's this reason that Rotary is now working with its partners to ensure that once a vaccine is discovered, that it can be widely and easily distributed across the globe. So that's tremendous news for uh, the polio campaign, for sure. That's, uh, that's great, Dave. Thank you very much for that announcement. And based on the nature of that announcement, President Deb, I think that's uh, uh, no fine for, for Dave on this one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. Um... I think that's a great news announcement and the work that you do for us. Uh, what are you, six years or seven years? Something like that. <laughs> so congratulations with that and uh, keep up the great work. Thank you, President Deb. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Jeff, uh, I'd like you to unmute uh, Dave Mills, if you wouldn't mind. Dave, how are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm fine. Uh... I was going to say past president, but uh, I'll, I'll say past president, uh, past SAA, and uh, Madam Chairman, uh, Madam President, uh, Deb, great to be on board. Great, great. Dave, uh, I know at this time of the year, we're normally uh, getting updates on, the, on uh, baseball in the summer, so we hadn't heard from you for a while, so I just thought I'd like you to give us an update, how the Baycats doing, yeah. uh, obviously an exciting season coming up. Well, we're... Uh, We've got a perfect record going, and uh, we're in our uh, seventh straight uh, championship. We uh, end with six, so we'll take this year as another one. That'll be seven, uh, Steve. So and uh, yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty slow, pretty boring, but uh, we're getting uh, gearing up for next year. So we'll be uh, we'll be there. So this season is kind of a gimme. Oh, of course, yes, it's gone. Okay, <laughs> and so so I guess uh, your uh, facility is empty. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, it's difficult getting into the park. And it's uh, COVID compliant? Absolutely. COVID compliant. And there is a, I guess my question for you, Dave, is there was a, 
an opportunity for you to generate revenue for the Barry community uh, with an empty facility and uh, COVID compliant. And uh, we didn't hear any good news announcements about your campaign to bring the Blue Jays to Barry. <laughs> Well, the offer's out there, Steve, and I understand they got kicked out of Pittsburgh last last night, and uh, they got no place to go. So uh, we made the offer. So uh, we'll see where that goes. So we can use this to table to come back when you give us a progress report about how successful you are. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so I guess I guess that means there's a, a fine potential fine in waiting. Uh, we can do that. Uh, if they show up and play here, uh, I'll gladly uh, contribute uh, some of the uh, proceeds for sure. Oh, okay. And if they don't, that means you weren't successful in your campaign. That's correct. Oh, okay. so that sounds like a fine, fine either way, correct? I think that that's appropriate. Okay. So I have someone here who's got a great memory and she's going to just keep that going. For okay. Excellent. Going forward. But thanks for all of that effort, Dave. Okay. Well, home, home opener is next May. <laughs> okay. I'm sure. Well, hopefully we'll hear more about that. You bet. Get... Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Uh, is uh, Jeff, is Wallace uh, around? I, ha I don't see him online. You do. Can you, uh, can you put the picture up anyways, please? Of course. Should be up. Oh, there it is. There it is. So, so um, here we have uh, Wallace and his, uh, his better half, Mary Lou, at a local establishment. And because uh, Wallace isn't here, it doesn't mean we aren't going to proceed. Uh, if anybody is looking very closely, you will see that Wallace has got a smile. Mary Lou is smiling. Uh, but more noticeable is the fact that Wallace is wearing a female shirt similar to his wife. So I don't know if he's smiling because of the probably the wine that's being drunk or the the shirt however i think there's some issues that we'll have to revisit when wallace is online uh one being he should be fine because he does not look as good as mary lou no matter what the case is and the fact that he can't individualize his own dress and has to wear a jersey the same as hers so again i guess we got a potential upcoming fine president deb uh, although they both look great, he surely doesn't look as good as his uh, better half. Well, absolutely. And um, Wallace is on our uh, champion uh, committee there to champion Rotary. I don't see a Rotary pin on his uh, shirt, so that doesn't, uh, you know, make him, uh, well, no, pretty much makes him eligible for a fine. Yep. So being that uh, Mary Lou looks wonderful in her shirt, uh, I don't think she deserves a fine, but definitely he does. So if he's going to wear a girl's shirt and not have the rotary pin on, then he's definitely in for at least a $5 fine. Oh, I, I agree. So again, we'll table that one for SAA Eric to follow up and be sure that we, uh, we uh, get some uh, money back from Wallace for that. Uh, I'm sure he'll say it's a great picture. I, I'm not quite sure I agree with that. So... Okay, next one, and hopefully he's online, is, uh, is Craig Walwin online? I don't see him either, Steve. Oh my gosh, these guys promised to be here, and now they're ducking and bobbing and weaving. So again, we're probably going to have to, uh, to table this one. I'm not even going to go into the story around this one, uh, Jeff, at this time, except it will be something that we're going to talk with with uh, with uh, SAA Eric and go go from there. So the next, uh, before we bring up the next, uh, the next uh, video, I just wanted to uh, share with the club that one of the things that we've talked about, and I think not just uh, this, this year, but previously with Craig and everything else, with the, the onset of COVID, there has been a major impact in the economy and particularly some of the businesses in, in, that are owned by and run by Rotarians. So uh, upon President Deb's urging, uh, I had the uh, pleasure of going out and talking to Adam Smith this week about COVID, the impact it's had on his business, the, uh, 
the things that he's doing as a business owner to help survive through this. And I guess as importantly, as you'll see with the video, the positive nature he has and the, uh, the initiatives he's taking to make things successful as we go through the transition and adjust to what we are gonna uh, have to uh, accept as the new norm. Uh, what I find is uh, uh, Adam was able just to talk about this and it was very interesting to be able to just sit back and listen and get inspired with some of the things that he's brought forward. It is our intention, of course, to be able to talk to other Rotarians uh, or other Rotarians who have impacts with businesses to understand how COVID has uh, impacted their business, not from necessarily all a negative standpoint, but as importantly, what are we gonna do to continue to generate uh, uh, new business and new economies and, and new revenues going forward? So this will be about a five minute video uh, sit back and enjoy and I'd like to thank Adam for his time today because he was very busy or his time yesterday because he was very busy and uh, look forward uh, to sharing this with the rest of the club. So go ahead, uh, Jeff, you can share that video. Okay, Adam Smith, uh, managing partner down at Hooligans, who you all know, uh, Hoolies as we like to refer to it. But uh, thanks for the opportunity here to talk a little bit about the last quarter or four months uh, in our business uh, can obviously remember it very clearly because Monday, March 16th, we shut down. The next day is our number two day of the year, uh, St. Patrick's Day, so everyone sort of missed out on that. It's funny how you can look at the problem and then the solutions just on the other side or, or looking for a silver lining in all this when they shut down, I mean, Dunlop Street, Meridian Square, we've had two years of construction headwinds downtown on our front doorstep. But when they closed both sides, Dunlop and Owen of Hooligans, four days later, every restaurant in the world shut down. So the positive is at least we we're on equal footing with everyone else. I'd say the toughest thing that's happened out of all this was at the time had 31 staff and having to lay 30 of them off, uh, that was hard. That was a hard conversation. It was not uh, a situation I ever envisioned being in, um, running a restaurant downtown. But having said that, we quickly you know, pivoted to, okay, we can't have anyone here. We have good food. Uh, we know people like it in the almost five years we've been in business. So we did continue takeout and it was just Andrew and I, and obviously that's not enough to pay the bills. I mean, being shuttered like we were, um, was a bit of a challenge. I came up creatively, creatively, sorry, to uh, try to supplement takeout sales with meal packs. And having lived in Midhurst, as several of my partners do for over 10 years, delivery options are poor. And so I thought, I bet you there are other families out there that would like to take a break if everyone's locked in their houses and cooking three meals a day, people would still like a break. Uh, so we quickly put together on Easter weekend, um, a couple of options, started with some people by text and email uh, in Snow Valley and in Midhurst and lo and behold, 15 weeks later, um, the project is still going on strong. We've now expanded to Horseshoe Valley on Sundays. We've been to dozens and dozens of homes and people, some of them order every week. In fact, it, when we finally opened and got the green light to open our rooftop on June 12th, it was endearing to me and sort of validation that people enjoy what you do when I had 17 of these homes reach out to me either by phone, text or email to ask, look, we know your rooftop's opening up, but we hope you continue the service because people were getting used to either Friday, Saturday, Sunday being their free pass uh, of the week. So that was great sales, um, a great surprise, a new division within our our business. Um, I would also, you know, give a shout out to the Kempenfeld Rotary Club, who had their first meeting, you know, March and April, everyone sort of had a little bit of a challenge. But um, early May, they did a virtual meeting and had their whole membership come down uh, and pick up a meal, I gave them a few options, and they picked it up in the afternoon. And then they all went back to their homes and did a zoom meeting, which I know we've been using that format uh, as well. So it gave me the idea of, you know, one way that we can continue to keep my staff busy outside of uh, you know the rooftop that we're currently operating with, but maybe even a fundraiser for the club is committee meals of giving an option to the chairs and whoever's hosting and if people want to come by and 
you know, pre-order the day before or by a couple days before the meeting uh, and pick up their meals and do a Zoom meeting. Uh, then a, a portion of each of the meals I can contribute back in either monthly or quarterly, um, give back to the Rotary Club. You know, I got to give a special shout out here and, and I, I hate naming names because I know I'm going to forget somebody. Uh, but Gary Pearson and Ted Barnaby, who live in Midhurst, uh, have been regular orders of the weekend meal packs. Um, John, of course, being a neighbor here, John Laking uh, and Anita, not only, you know, walk-in customers when we were open, but uh, continually bought takeout from us. In close proximity, our Owen Street neighbors as well, and, and Brian Galbraith and his family have been uh, terrific. So I certainly appreciate the support. Um, I guess the lesson learned from this whole shutdown is that, and they've called it the hospitality apocalypse, it's, you know, while we've had terrific success opening up the rooftop, um, it's been like riding a rocket ship. I've been here for 154, the last 155 days or something like that. It, it all sort of blurs together, just trying to keep the lights on. But um, when we are having success here, there are other restaurants close by in Barrie, central Ontario, uh, you know, across Canada that are shutting down. And not just ones that people might say were struggling and may have closed in 2020 anyways, like long-term 30, 40, 50 year iconic institution restaurants in Toronto that are closing their doors permanently forever. So we feel very fortunate uh, that the investment in the rooftop, you know, 12 years ago is, is paying off well now. We'll see where inside dining goes. Um, you know, with face masks, nothing feels right right now in proximity and, and people's sensitivity, but hopefully we've got clearer days ahead from us. But the days of just having people come in and eat a drink at your restaurant, I think are gone. You need to diversify and whether it's pickup or delivery platforms or catering or, or finding creative ways to get to people and organizations and groups. Um, I leave no rock unturned uh, and certainly appreciate the support the Rotary Club has given us over the years. I was really glad that we got our St. Patrick's Day lunch in the week prior, because if we had done it after St. Patrick's Day, it would have never happened. So thank you, uh, Carrie Thornton, for uh, helping arrange that. And it, the support from Rotary has been great over the years, uh, and certainly ask for that continued support moving forward as we find our way and make our way through this new reality. Thanks for the time to share. Thank you, uh, thank you, Adam. I, I guess if I listen to that, and I've heard the, the video a couple of times, I guess every time I, I listen to it, I see uh, a story of, uh, of uh, uh, disruption, um, changes uh, being forced upon a business. I see the reaction to how that is impacting the business. But more importantly, in the last half of that whole video, Adam was talking about what he's doing and the impact on the business and what they're gonna do to try and be successful. So from, uh, from that perspective, uh, I think it was very encouraging. And uh, it is the intention to continue to talk to different businesses and get perspective, particularly from a rotary standpoint, because everybody is being impacted by this. And uh, I think there's lessons to be learned that we can all take a nugget or two away and help uh, uh, build our businesses one way or another and uh, move forward. So again, thanks to Adam for spending time and sharing that with the club. Um, as we uh, are supposed to have as a, a speaker uh, every week, and unfortunately, um, the speaker this week uh, did, was not able to help us and, and come forward. So we're gonna improvise here, and we're gonna move forward to uh, go to different, uh, I'll call it potential uh, more mature Rotarians. I guess that takes away the reference to senior Rotarians, but more mature Rotarians because in keeping with the Adam uh, video, we want to talk about Rotary, the things that have gone on with Rotary and inconsistent with uh, President Deb's message, uh, giving and sharing is what Rotary is all about. So with that, it's my pleasure to be able to introduce a few Rotarians who have uh, graciously uh, volunteered to come forward at the last minute and share with the rest of the uh, Rotary Club some of their stories or a story that may be very meaningful. So with that, I'm going to uh, ask uh, Dennis Tuck to start off. And Dennis, uh, as you know, is a member of our Satellite Club, but he's agreed to uh, share a story. So Jeff, if you could uh, unmute Dennis, that'd be great. Okay, that's done. Uh, well, welcome to me, to the Rotary Club of Barrie. <laughs> I don't know, I guess everybody's muted, so. 
uh, thank you, uh, uh, past Sergeant at Arms uh, Steve and uh, President Depp for having me today to speak to you for five minutes on my 32 years in Rotary. <laughs> Um, I joined in 1989. Uh, Marshall Green was my sponsor. And some of the other more mature Rotarians may remember that uh, uh, 1989, uh, the Rotary Clubs of the World were male only. And it wasn't until sometime in the 90s that we were able to enjoy the company of, uh, of ladies in, in Rotary. Uh, in 89, there was, uh, spouses were encouraged to uh, participate through a group called the Rotary Ants, and quite often you would see them at uh, our fundraising events or special events helping out. And uh, We've uh, certainly progressed quite a bit since then. Uh, I've been involved in quite a few projects over the years, uh, both international and community. Uh, I, my first involvement was with uh, uh, the club and some of our members was on a uh, uh, Rotary ex uh, club inner club visit to uh, Bermuda, and I understand that Betty Ann was actually I think the past president of the club that we visited in Bermuda. That was uh, St. George's, and it was uh, it was quite an eventful time. Uh, you know some of the people that went along: there was Alfred and and, uh, and uh, Don and Chris Pratt and and um, uh, the Tishes, David and Karen. And we had, uh, we had a, a quite, a, quite an enjoyable time there. And I think it was probably, as far as club, inner club visits go, probably the most uh, enjoyable one that I'd been on over the years. Uh, we had a couple of incidents. David fell off a moped and almost broke his arm, but ended up with a swelled elbow. Mm -hmm. Alfred and I were on mopeding around the, around the island. And, as Betty Ann would remember, uh, driving on the uh, wrong side of the road can certainly be a challenge, especially on a small line on the big trucks and little mopeds. So it was, it was quite enjoyable. We had, uh, we had good entertainment. Uh, the island's cuisine is excellent. So uh, there again, it was a, it was a fabulous trip. Uh, since then, we've done other ones to uh, American cities. Uh, we've done uh, oh between. Uh, in Canada, I guess between Windsor and we've been up to Sudbury and other other cities uh, more local, and and I would encourage the club to continue that initiative when we're allowed to get back into doing inner clubs. It's certainly a, it's nice to share our experiences with other clubs, uh, whether it's in our district or internationally. Now, after we were introduced to that, I, I got involved in some international trips through international community. We had visited Ecuador. Uh, Africa a couple of times. Uh, the Ecuador trip was organized by George Cameron and it involved a couple dozen Rotarians going to uh, work on an irrigation project that we had funded through this uh, inter global grant at the time. I think they were called international grants or something at that time and we were working at 14,500 feet for a week helping the locals put this irrigation system down to their farm fields. Uh, to allow them to grow two crops a year. And, and I was fortunate enough to be able to have my son Phil go along with it. And he was 16 at the time. And I, I think he, that was a real life experience for him. Uh, Deb and uh, George Cameron brought their, their daughters, uh, Heather and he. And I, and I think it was the same but, uh, beautiful experience for them. And uh, from there, we uh, organized uh, through um, the Rotary Club of uh, El Doret, uh, a and a uh, local entrepreneur, uh, Jim Pesky, uh, an initiative in uh, El Doret and Catelli uh, with an orphanage. And uh, we had uh, funded through the Rotary Club of El Doret uh, quite a few thousands of dollars for various projects they were doing. And it was a, it was a very uh, eye-opening trip. We got to see uh, sort of the other side, as they say. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to go back there a few years later with uh, Pastor Terry and Andy Mitchell, and we toured around some of the sites that we'd been prior and, and found that uh, sometimes things don't quite work out the way that you're told that they're working out. And But I think in the long run, our club learned something from that whole enterprise, and, and we're certainly a little more vigilant of the other clubs internationally we're working with, and sometimes the initiatives, whether they're appropriate or not. 
uh, I know that the International Committee has, to, with uh, Peter Lormer's looking at uh, the possible projects this year, and with the, con the situation with Govet, it's certainly going to be a challenge. But um, the uh, the projects that the Rotary Club of Barrie do have done internationally are, are, you know, very very highly thought of by uh, other Rotary clubs, especially in the area. So certainly encourage that too. Uh, the other thing that I've really enjoyed over the year in Rotary is our home hosting. Uh, it's allowed uh, my wife Lolly and I to uh, get personal with some of our fellow Rotarians. And uh, a little story that I do have, and I think Ken Baxter is here with us today. Uh, Ken and his wife uh, were at our house four years ago, and as a gift when they arrived, uh, they brought an orchid. So every year, I send a picture of this orchid fully bloomed to Ken, so he can see that, you know, their gift has been uh, immortalized, I guess, or whatever, and and been able to uh, participate in these home hosting things is, uh, is is certainly that's one little memory that I have that'll last a long time. So, and hopefully Ken enjoys seeing this picture of his orchid every year. So I think that's sort of wraps up my general experience over the years. I enjoy all aspects of Rotary. And uh, thank you very much for having me speak. Thank you, Dennis. We, uh, we appreciate you taking the time uh, as a member of our uh, satellite club to come and share that. Thanks very much. I'm gonna quickly now turn to Scott Elliott, who has uh, indicated he'd like to share a story. Scott? Thank you, uh, past president. I, uh, and and uh, current President Debbie. Uh, this is a human story. It's a story about uh, my first runathon with the fun run of Barry. It was one of the early days, and at that time we used to have uh, four members. Uh, and you would pass uh, the, the, the telethon or whatever the, the thing to the next guy, and uh, you would do your five kilometer run. Happened to be that day was uh, probably 85 degrees out. I started off the day with uh, a glass of water, went to Steve's, uh, 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 Steve no Noble's uh, uh, driveway and pulled concrete until about 5.30 in the afternoon in the sun. Didn't have lunch, didn't have breakfast, didn't have anything to eat. And I went, oh my God, I'm late for the fun run. So I rushed down and I thought, geez, I should have something to eat. And then I thought, well, golly, if I eat, I might puke because I'm told you're not supposed to eat before you run. And I run at least once or twice every 10 years. So I was the first person with a baton, and I ran the five kilometers. And as I'm coming in, I'm not in very good shape. And Donnie Pratt and, and uh, a whole bunch of other fellows, they're all looking, and I can't limp in. I, I can't walk. i got to go fast. So I went as fast as I could. But by the time I got to the end and passed on the baton, um, I really wasn't very conscious. And I don't think people really knew it because I, I basically fell down and it wasn't just exhaustion, I passed out. I crawled to the washrooms. I, I stayed there for, I don't know, about a half an hour, passed out there. I tried to walk, I couldn't. Uh, so I crawled around. Roger Broussard saw me when I was stumbling. And uh, I think he thought I'd had a fair bit of beer. Uh, I hung myself on the windshield wipers of uh, my magic wagon so my fellow partners could find me after the race because I was pretty well unconscious. And I went to sleep on the windshield of my car in the sun. And uh, so anyways, uh, the, the, run, the, the rest of the race was run. The guys started looking for me and they found me on the windshield. And basically it was just heat hydration and dehydration and all that sort of stuff. So they did the proper thing. They took me immediately over to a bar and filled me up with beer and everything was good again. And that was my first experience in the fun run and it was a blast. I have no idea what really happened after I finished the race. <laughs> Anyways, that's just a human story of, of a fun run. Well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's great. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Scotty. And, and with that, I'm going to pass the baton, hopefully in better shape, over to Arlette. I guess she's got some visitors there and, and hopefully they can share some stories as well.
You're not unmuted, uh, Arlette. How's that? That's even better. Perfect. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Sergeant at Arms Steve, President Deb. Uh, I am uh, very fortunate to have with me today two uh, past presidents. I have on my left uh, David McCullough and on my right Ian Pavlik. And quite honestly, we are just going to have to wing it because we are um, a little unprepared and everything that I was going to say, Dennis just said, um, because I've had the fortune of uh, being on the uh, same trips as Dennis or most of them. And I guess the one thing, if I could say anything um, to some of the younger Rotarians, and that is to, if you have an opportunity to participate in any of these events, whether it's an inner club visit or an international trip, do it, do it, whatever it takes to be able to do it because they really are life-changing experiences, not for just 16 year olds like Philip Tuck, but for a little more mature people like myself. Um, we don't op have the opportunity to see a lot of what goes on the, in the world that's not somehow manipulated by the media. Being on the ground somewhere really does give you an opportunity to see what goes on in the world. So that's my advice is to try and do anything you can to participate in some of these trips because they really will change your life. Um, so having said that, I am going to pass it along. I'm gonna switch chairs with Ian Pavlik. Hello, everybody. Uh, so actually, I, I had a couple things that came to mind. One, I'm going to play off of uh, Scotty. Scotty brought me into Rotary back in uh, 1997. And it was in October. And I have two stories that happened in my first month in Rotary. So uh, the first one was, I, so I joined and got inducted on, uh, on the Thursday. And right away, Scotty said, you got to sign up for something. And so he signed me up for the first club event, which was on the Saturday, which was to do a highway cleanup. So we used to clean up the highways. I think it was 400. So I showed up to clean up the highways with a bunch of guys. I had no idea who they were, but they took me under their arm and they really sort of made me feel welcome. And I have a fond memory of spending the whole morning on the Saturday with Gord Crandall. Didn't know this guy from anybody, um, but he was friendly with me and he showed me what to do. He introduced me to people. And then afterwards, I don't remember the the greasy spoon that we went to for, for breakfast, the late breakfast, but I sat beside him as well. And I'm like, so what do you do, Gord? And he told me all about his life building bridges and so forth. So now Gord's no longer with us, but I really uh, had fun that there was a fond memory of a, a more senior Rotarian at the time taking a, a new guy under his wing. And, and I think that's important for new members to get that kind of introduction. About a month later, so we the auction would run, typically run the, well, like it does now in November. This again, my first year into it, and it would run at the Rogers, um, what do you call it, the building over there on the uh, line, or on St. Vincent. Vincent, right by my office. Um, and, uh, you know, Scotty said, okay, well, you got to get involved in the, in the auction, and you're a computer guy, so you should help out with the computers. I'm like, all right, what is that? So there were this network of computers that would get set up. I didn't know anything about it. And uh, they would be connected by phone cable. So not normal network cable, but you would actually use this sort of funky soldered together connections to connect actual phone lines between these series of computers so that when people called in, they would type in the bids. All right, I learned it on the fly that night. Everything's fine. Well, the bids start coming in that night and about, usually it's a three hours of bids coming in. At about hour two, somebody tripped on one of the cords which brought the whole network down. And then we suddenly we couldn't record bids anymore. So like, Ian, what are you gonna do? I'm like, I have no idea. So we went and turned the server back on, brought everything back up, and 80% of the bids people had called in were gone. So suddenly all of these bids that people had submitted were had disappeared, had gone into the ether. I had no idea. Everybody looked at me. Um, but anyway, in the end, they had printouts of everything and everybody hand bombed stuff in. And I remember when I was done, I was like, what the hell has Scotty got me into? This has been a hell of a night. <laughs> but we really didn't lose any money and uh, we got everything back, but it sure was a stressful introduction to projects uh, in Rotary. So there was my couple of quick stories. Dave? Hello, President Deb. Hello, past president Dave. How are you? I'm doing great. 
Ian meant to start off with hello, President Depp, oh, so please don't <laughs> find him. I'll collect on your behalf. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for allowing me to uh, share a rotary moment. And uh, along the same lines as others, just the experiences that we have, uh, I consider myself to be someone that's uh, engaged in Rotary and an active member and uh, what Rotary means to me. But I'd been, into the, I'd been in the club about eight years and I still hadn't gone to a district conference. And, and I didn't know if it appealed to me or not. But uh, the year it was up at the Marriott in Muskoka, Nancy and I went up and attended. And the experience that we had was wonderful. And uh, what it was is just spending more time with, with members from our own club in a different setting. But more importantly, seeing so many other members from the district and seeing what Rotary meant to them. And then also being able to take part in some of the seminars and see what Rotary was doing outside of our own area and uh, learn so much from it. And uh, since then, I've gone to some additional uh, district conferences, which led into going to an RI convention when it was in Toronto. And I can tell you the experience is amazing to see so many people engaged and all wanting to do uh, what's right for their community and globally as well. And then attending an RI convention and, and being in an auditorium and seeing 25,000 other people who were there for the same reason was an amazing feeling. So I think what I would share, but many of our members have attended district conferences and have attended RI conventions. What I would suggest to our newer members or anyone that hasn't already gone is do it sooner than later. Because I think what you will find is just how important Rotary is and how much more engaged it would probably make you in Rotary seeing what's going on in other areas and also around the world. So that's my uh, story, my experience, and uh, thanks for asking me to say a few words. Thank you. Who's next? Thank you, uh, Dave. Uh, next up is uh, Marshall Green. Uh, Marshall, uh, we'd like to hear your story. You're not unmuted, Marshall. Okay, is that it? Thank you, President Deb and Sergeant at Arms, Acting Sergeant at Arms, uh, uh, Steve. I have uh, three short things to say, uh, two stories and one just sort of comment. Um, one, uh, my uh, comment is that uh, I had the fortune of being uh, president in uh, 1991, which uh, if uh, anybody is old enough to remember, was a year of a uh, very serious recession. Uh, which wasn't a great year to be uh, head of a group of business people. Uh, however, what I did do during that year is uh, call on several of the very successful business people in the club that year, including people like Bill Caldwell and Jack Walwyn, uh, who offered uh, their, their services as uh, mentors uh, for several of the younger uh, members who were at that point uh, either starting their businesses or looking at or having trouble with their, their businesses. Uh, I found uh, that was one of my um, heartwarming experiences uh, in Rotary where uh, our club members do come to the assistance of others, uh, part of the importance of uh, networking in, uh, uh, in Rotary. The two sort of the humorous stories that I wanted to tell, uh, one uh, comes from uh, uh, one of those international trips uh, that uh, Arlette was talking about, making sure that everybody takes. Uh, I believe it was uh, past president Greg McWatt who arranged our trip to New Orleans uh, to see the Heritage Festival uh, there, which was a terrific experience. I think there were about uh, 25 of us who went down. Um, we spent a lot of time with uh, my uh, buddy, Roly Harris. Uh, for those of you who don't know my buddy, Roly Harris, he is an incredible uh, autograph collector. Uh, he uh, does nothing but his whole basement is covered in autographs that he's uh, uh, obtained from celebrities of various kinds of, uh, of during his, uh, his whole life, going back to high school. Um, as we were walking down one of the streets in uh, New Orleans, uh, uh, Susan and I and uh, Rolly and Janie, there was a big black limousine there with a couple of uh, big looking bodyguards around it uh, with the back door open. As I walked by, I looked in and it was Jose Feliciano. I don't know, maybe some of the Rotary <laughs> younger members don't know him. He's a tremendous singer and guitar player uh, from back in that era. And I just sort of commented uh, to Rolly as we were walking by, 
oh, that, that was Jose Feliciano in that limousine back there. Like a shot, and you can imagine Roley with his girth, imagine go like a shot, jumped into the back of the limousine around the two bodyguards, uh, was in there for about seven or eight minutes, and came out with a photograph of uh, Jose Feliciano signed personally to Roley Harris. So he has that memory of uh, his trip to uh, New Orleans. The other one, uh, a lot of members won't remember, maybe some of them do, uh, Bert Cook, who was a member of our club for years and years and years. Uh, Bert was a wonderful, wonderful gentleman, very important to the city of Barrie in that uh, he was uh, head of the, uh, the Barrie Tannery for years. When that uh, uh, business closed, he became uh, Barrie's first uh, development or industrial development commissioner. A wonderful man and a gentleman, always wore a suit. You very, very seldom saw him without a suit and tie. Uh, this particular evening, we were at the home of uh, Bud and uh, uh, Bud Gooderum to um, have a committee meeting. And uh, being the wonderful host that Bud is, we all sat around the table and there uh, was all sorts of snacks going around, uh, chips and pretzels and such. Um, I was sitting next to Bert, separated by a table, um, which was a bowl of potpourri. Uh, as all of the various uh, uh, things were being passed around, Bert grabbed the bowl of potpourri and offered me some. I thought he was kidding, so I just sort of said, no thanks, uh, but I'm trying to quit. Uh, then immediately, Bert grabbed a big handful, and he had big mittens. He was about six foot five, and he had big mittens. He grabbed a handful of the potpourri and threw it into his mouth. And you could see that almost instantaneously he realized, uh-oh, this was a mistake. And so for the next uh, 10 minutes, he was quietly trying to move the potpourri out of his mouth, piece by piece by piece. Uh, those are my two funny stories and my one heartwarming story about Rotary. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Marshall. That's uh, that's very tasty to hear that from you. Thank you. So, and I'd like to turn it over to to Baz. Baz, Sergeant Arm, Steve, and President Debbie. Thanks for uh, for emceeing this, Steve. Uh, <laughs> wonderful stories. Um, I, I want to tell a story about a Rotarian uh, who's very important to the club and. Uh, was kind of dear to me. Um, Terry Porter, um, for anybody who knows the South Shore uh, and drives up to the parking lot, they can see a wonderful rotary wheel on the facade at the parking lot. Um, after the building was, thanks to the Rotary Club of Barry, was renovated, um, Terry Porter decided that uh, we needed to have some exposure and recognition for what the Rotary Club meant to that rebuild. So one day that Rotary wheel was put up, the city was not notified, nobody knew about it, and it's still there today. So that's a bit of legacy that every time you see that wheel, think about Terry Porter and, uh, and his initiative to simply bypass <coughs> the, uh, the proper channels to make this happen. Uh, and Terry and I have another connection from the fun run. Um, that's where he had a heart attack and um, uh, I sort of sat on the bench uh, with him on my lap, <laughs> as it were, and chatting and trying to keep him positive until the ambulance came. And uh, he has always been a, a character. He's had a strong history with Rotary, including the chicken barbecue. And uh, I will always fondly remember uh, the stories around Terry Porter and uh, and his legacy of the rotary wheel on the on the South Shore building, and uh, and I want to say thank you to all the Rotarians who stepped in today to uh, fill in the uh, the hole in the, that the uh, cancellation of the presenter uh, caused. So thank you very much. Thank you, Past President Baz, and uh, I will uh, echo your sentiments to thank all of those who stepped in to uh, fill in for a a vacant uh, speaker space in our program today. And before I turn it over to President Deb, I have one small good news announcement. And that is, as all of you know, living together is difficult. Uh, living and working together is even more difficult. And the good news announcement is having lived and worked with uh, President Deb on this program today, the good news announcement is we do not need Brian Galbraith's services. So sorry, Brian, 
but that's good for us. And with that, I'll turn it over to President Deb. Uh, it, it, it is a little dangerous when you let your other half have uh, access to the mic. <laughs> but thank you very much, everybody, for, for pitching in on those stories. I know uh, some people that I reached out to um, had said they had lots of stories. However, they couldn't be shared because they're under the uh, guise of, okay, what happens at pets stays at pets. What happens on the Bill's bus trip stays on the Bill's bus trip. Um, Chuck, what happens in Nashville stays in Nashville, something like that is what I've heard of, and your name got thrown under the bus for that. Um, yeah, so I'm glad there was lots of stories, and I guess the moral of the story is get out there, participate, so you can be on the inside story. Um, so with that, all the speakers will receive a, uh, a donation uh, in your name to polio. So moving on to President Deb's Stronger Together, Together Inspired moment. And Jeff. Here we go. So in, in, full, in full spirit of today, our community is stronger when we all come together. During times of uncertainty, such as the current battle against COVID-19 or have a speaker issue, we are together inspired by the opportunity to witness the moments how people never fail to rally around each other. So generously helping friends, neighbors, and even strangers. So this truly is the Rotary way. So having said that, and having no other business for the good of Rotary, I declare this meeting adjourned. Have a good evening. Thank you, President Deb. Hey, everybody. Bye, everyone. Can we can turn around. Thank you, everyone. Go ahead. See you guys later. Thanks, President Deb. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks for all the stories. <laughs>